Virginia Woolf famously said that you can't think well, love well, or sleep well if you haven't dined well. So today on Planet Cruise Weekly, we're asking the simple question, which is the best cruise line for food? Hello and welcome to episode 56 of Planet Cruise Weekly where finally Glenn and I get to talk about our favourite subject. Food! It's all about food today and, and how we love our food and how in fact cruise ships are some of the best places in the world to get and enjoy food. They are. No one's ever starved on a cruise ship, have they? They haven't. The food can make or break your cruise. Now traditionally ships uh, used to have two restaurants on board, a main dining room which would be waiter service and open for set sittings um, and a come anytime self-service buffet which would normally be higher up and have outdoor dining areas. Now in episode 53 of Planet Cruise Weekly we looked at how in 2000 Norwegian cruise lines introduced freestyle cruising which shifted the focus of the cruise ship dining towards multiple dining venues which specialise in one type of food and where the main dining rooms were now open sitting which is really good and flexible for most people especially if you've got families they really like and, that. And if you they? want to watch the episode click the link because it's just there. Since then there has been a fierce battle to create not only more choice but also attract celebrity chefs to collaborate and open their own dining experience on board with household names like Marco Pierre White teaming up with Piano and more recently Jamie and Oliver with Royal Caribbean. So before we dive into this competitive and very subjective area of the cruise industry, let's have a quick look at some average food consumption facts, my favourite part of the show. So in an average week, 18,500 pounds of beef, 54,000 pounds of fresh veg and 5,500 gallons of milk are consumed on board the Celebrity Millennium. Now, in fact, a whole county in Iowa raises all its cattle for sale to Carnival Cruise Lines. On board Carnival Dream, passengers eat a total of 28,731 shrimp every week. And 15,000 coffees are drunk every week on board the new Costa Fortuna. On board MSC Fantasia class ships, 2,000 different recipes are used on a seven day cruise. Now, you've got 280 bottles of free champagne, 10 pounds of caviar and 120 pounds of lobster are normally found in Keith Maynard's fridge when he was cruise director <laughs> on Cunard. But also <laughs> that's the same that's going to be devoured on seaborne ships over a seven night cruise. That's true. You used to have a few perks, didn't you? Oh, I did a few perks. It was <laughs> nice, yeah. Now on an average P&O Ventura 14 day cruise, get this, 171,840 main meals are served. Now, during an eight-night cruise on board Fred Olsen's Boudicca, 630 litres of ice cream will be eaten. And every day, 3,500 fresh eggs are consumed on board Queen Mary 2, and there's only one chicken, called Olay. Ha! <laughs> do you get it? Olay! Boom, boom. Maybe I used not. to do that one on board. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Is that why you're not on anymore? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so today we're going to take a look at who we think are the top five cruise lines for food. And again, it is very subjective. It's our opinions. You may or may not agree, but let's see what we can do. So very simply, we're going to give you our top five cruise lines for food, starting in reverse order at number five, which actually is Carnival. Now that may come as a surprise to some of you because Carnival are what we would consider here at Planet Cruise more of a four-star cruise line. They've got a lot of mass market appeal. Um, they are not as well known for the breadth of alternative restaurants as other mainstream lines such as Norwegian and Royal Caribbean, but they offer more places for passengers to get free food and they've dramatically raised their standards over the past few years and are winning over many, many new fans. They are. I went on this uh, last year and I thought they were very, very good. Actually, yeah. um, as is standard on mainstream cruise ships, Carnival offers a main dining room, uh, two per vessel and a cruise buffet. On top of these venues, Carnival ships offer anywhere from four to 12 additional spots to grab a bite. Now beyond traditional dining, Carnival is focused on expanding its casual dining options. An Asian themed buffet station, a New York style pizza deli, a 24 hour pizzeria, a pre-dinner sushi bar and Indian food are all now staples on board. Most ships also have upscale for fee alternative restaurants, serving steakhouse fare and Carnival Magic features a for fee Italian restaurant serving homemade pastas. Mm. Now you have the Blue Iguana Cantina which deserves a special mention and serves up tacos and burritos 
burritos. The breakfast burritos get rave reviews, and all, when I was on the ship, everyone was eating them, mm. with uh, full toppings and the salsa bar. But the real star here is the fried fish tacos, which was good as any I've seen on the street stands in Mexico. Now, another venue that should be top of your list is Fahrenheit 555. It's a modern atmospheric steakhouse where the food is plated with drama and elegance. But the standout dining venue with Carnival is their own celebrity collaboration with American TV star and restaurateur Guy Fieri, who lends his name and his burger making prowess to fun poolside burger joints aboard most of the ships. It doesn't cost extra and is styled like a 1950s roadside diner. Now, Fieri's burger making philosophy pairs simple 80-20 chuck burgers with lots of tasty and greasy toppings, and these include donkey sauce, spiced onion rings, chili, super melty cheese, and brown sugar barbecue sauce. Now, also available on all carnival ships is the chef's table dining experience, which affords a dozen passengers a multi-course dinner with a master chef, a private cocktail reception, and a tour of the galley and its operations. This dining option usually takes place in the non-traditional venues such as the gallery or library, and it can be booked on board at the information desk for a per person cost of approximately $75. And that does change, of course, yeah. depending on when you're watching this. Uh, now, Carnival take our number five spot because they offer lots of choice, but more importantly, nearly all of it is included in the original cruise fare, making it a great choice for families. Okay, now in at number four, it's Celebrity Cruises, and they've always pushed the boat out when it comes to dining, not just in the sheer choice, but also the quality and the taste of the food they offer. In fact, the main dining rooms on board the Celebrity Feet are so good that if you choose to eat in there all cruise, I would actually be disappointed. Though you could argue that this is necessary because the alternative dining venues are all extra, and there's also a fee for room service. But that said, Every one of Celebrity's alternative dining venues are brilliant. All of Celebrity's menus are crafted and overseen by Michelin-starred chef Cornelius Gallagher and inspired by and are locally sourced from amazing regions they visit. One of the things I love is the fact that the healthy options also abound with Celebrity's SPE Health Through Food programme, offering sustainability sourced fresh and organic produce as part of the spa cuisine served up at the Top Deck Spa Cafes. Never had you down as a spa cuisine kind of chap. Ah, oh, there's a lot of things you don't know about me. Mm. Now, there can be up to 10 different restaurants to choose from, so as you cruise around the world, so do your taste buds. Dive into a delicious plate of true rustic Italian cuisine at the Tuscan Grill, maybe devour a plate of filet mignon in the French-themed Michelin-star quality Muranos, or be creative and build your own crepe at Bistro on Five. But for something that really sums up celebrity in a nutshell, you simply must try cuisine. It's cool, contemporary, and slightly offbeat, uh, tapas style and it's great interpretation of dishes from around the world is simply unmissable. Uh, the menus come on iPads, they include things like sushi lollipops, lobster escargot, popcorn fish and chips and even disco shrimp. Another nice addition with Celebrity is that the suites and aqua class passengers have their own restaurants, Luminaire and Blue, but you can also eat in the main dining room. Now having cruised aqua class on a couple of occasions, I have to admit that it's one of my top three at sea and really balances the healthy and tasty card very, very well. Now, Celebrity's other high profile partnership is via Bravo TV's Top Chef and it means that Celebrity brings several chef testants on board for cooking demonstrations, quick fire challenges where chefs compete against each other and the clock and meet and greets and the legendary Top Chef night in the main restaurant uh, where the menus feature uh, the chef's creations. Really, really great fun events and, and a highlight of most people's cruises. So Celebrity make number four on our list for the excellent food quality and standards for not only their chargeable eateries, but even more importantly, their main dining rooms. Now, in at number three, it's Crystal Cruises, who display pretty much an unforgettable level of detail that I suppose you would expect from a Japanese-owned cruise line. The service and the foods are easily the standouts here. Uh, there are fewer dining options than many of the mainstream cruise lines, yes, but in this case, less is more. It's a case of quality over quantity. Now there's a main dining room, a buffet, and a couple of excellent chargeable alternatives to choose from. The Crystal Dining Room allows for set sit-ins or walk-in at any time, and always offers two very different menus, the classic or the modern, depending on whether you're feeling adventurous or not. 
The big difference here is that the higher price items such as lobster that traditionally would only appear on Gala Night on board other lines are included every single day. Other highlights which show the crystal difference is the unlimited freshly squeezed orange juice which is available at the Lido Caf. Now this acts as the ship's buffet venue and breakfast here is an absolute must with an excellent omelette station, delicious homemade to order waffles and even an Asian breakfast bar with fried rice and miso soup. Nice. Ben and Jerry's ice cream is served all day on deck 11 along with fast food options from the Trident Grill and between four and five every day you can enjoy the ritual and elegance of some absurdly good themed afternoon teas. Yeah, I think the Mozart afternoon tea and the chocolate afternoon tea are two of the most popular amazing Black Forest Gatto. Now there are two alternative restaurants to try, the first of which is Prego and is probably the best Italian restaurant to see. It's run in partnership with Los Angeles based Piero uh, Salvaggio and he's of Valentino fame and it's classic and famous for things like fritto misto, uh, vitello tonato and the mushroom soup. So if you get a chance to go there, definitely try some of those. Then there is Silk Road, the real rock star of Crystal Cruises. It's the brainchild of Nobu Matsui, who is widely acclaimed as the master of Japanese Peruvian fusion cuisine. A classically trained sushi chef, Nobu has an empire of restaurants across the world in cities like London, New York, Melbourne and Milan. Now, Silk Road features a standalone sushi bar where some of the sashimi is even made from fish picked up in the port itself. And then the main restaurant itself where Nobu's uh, Japanese Peruvian fusion food runs riot with noble style, uh, noble style lobster with truffle sauce mm. and the signature black cod and miso. Now for both Prego and Silk Road, your first visit is included in the cruise fare and after that there is a small cover charge. So by virtue of the superb attention to detail and dining experiences which wouldn't look out of place in the Michelin Guide, Cristel are number three in our list. Number two, Glenn, tell number us what's number two. Number two is uh, going to be Viking. Oh, Viking. Going to okay. go with Viking. Viking. So since 2015, Viking Ocean has been making waves with their growing fleet of beautiful, small, ocean-going cruise ships where their award-winning uh, formula, honed from years of domination in the river cruise industry, has simply been given license to blossom. Nowhere is this being seen more than in many reviews we received about the onboard dining. In fact, some of the crew have just returned from a filming trip on board the Viking Star and have not stopped talking about it since. There's no extra fee to dine in any restaurant, save for the kitchen table, which is more a dining journey where 12 people go ashore in the morning with the chef to shop for the ingredients in a local food market before at dinner time, under the chef's tutelage, they help to prepare the meal and then finally dining on the, the multi-course extravaganza that's paired with special wines chosen by the head sommelier. It's an amazing experience if you have the money. The main restaurants are gorgeous open seating affairs with floor to ceiling windows and diverse menus. But the real highlight is the regional tasting menus where in Barcelona, for example, the menu consists of a tapas platter as a starter, a Catalonian seafood paella as the entree and a creme catalana for dessert. Now Viking feature possibly the best buffet restaurants in the industry with open kitchens and freshly prepared food which isn't allowed to sit for too long. Now room service is included, available around the clock and the menu is tantalising with items like Norwegian gravlax, chef salad, cheese plates, pasta with three sauce options, grilled salmon, chicken and of course burgers. Mamsen is a Norwegian deli which offers sweet and savoury treats from Viking president Torsten Hagen's mother's cookbook and it serves a, a selection of open-faced and warm sandwiches, creamy pastries and pies and fabulous, delicious waffles. The real star with Viking though is Manfredi's, an Italian restaurant with an open kitchen at the back where chefs prepare delectable anti-pasto, uh, crispy fried calamari with basmanic balsamic uh, dipping sauce, veal <laughs> scalpone, I know, superb pastas and risottos and a Nutella panna cotta, which will ruin other desserts moving forward. So that's why Viking make it to number two on our list and make them a great choice for couples looking for an unpretentious, fresh take on dining, which needs no celebrity endorsement. And finally, drum roll, Glenn. In at number one. p and Ferries, over <laughs> the Isle of Wight. No, it's actually Oceania. Um, and in 2003, two of Luxury Cruising's biggest names teamed up to create one of the best value for money options in cruising, a destination intensive floating hotel experience which focuses on food. And in fact, they styled themselves as the cruise line for enthusiastic foodies where you can have whatever you want, 
whenever you want. Nice. For a start, Oceana spends more on food than any other cruise company and all of their four restaurants are open seating and included in the cost of your cruise fare. But what's most impressive is the quality of the ingredients with the beef and lamb sourced from their own farm in Colorado and the seafood from their own farm in Maine. And yes, you can taste the difference. Now Oceania work in partnership with their own celebrity chef, Jacques Pepin. He was born in France and served as the personal chef to several heads of state before relocating to the United States. Now in addition to authoring 25, yes you heard me rightly, 25 cookbooks and hosting multiple cooking shows on TV, he holds the title of Oceania Cruises Master Chef and Executive Culinary Director. And this is the key difference with Oceania, because although Pepin has his own restaurants on board, which you can go and enjoy in, he also influences every single chef that works on board that ship. In a sense, he's got his finger in all the pies, if you'll forgive that kind of... Food, <laughs> it's not very good, is it? No. So not literally sticking finger in the pies, but his influence is across everything. And again, you can taste the difference. There are five restaurants to enjoy on every ship in the fleet. The main dining room is again so good you won't want to go anywhere else and it even offers delicious Canyon Ranch Spa Club cuisine so the taste is not compromised by even the strictest diet. There's a buffet where upscale choices like lobster, steak and freshly prepared lamb chops are reg regularly available and their options vary from ship to ship but include the traditional Italian foods off Toscana to the classic American Steakhouse Polo Grill. But the standout dining experience has to be Red Ginger, which has been voted the best restaurant at sea more times than I care to remember. And its menu of Thai, Vietnamese and Japanese food is simply out of this world and includes the best fish dish I've ever tasted, miso glazed sea bass, and also a wonderfully spicy watermelon duck salad that really, really packed a, a punch, shall we say. The other great feature of Cruise with Oceana is their first of a kind, but now copied by other lines, hands-on culinary studios with 12 cooking stations. Now here you can sign up for such themed classes as magical Moroccan, Turkish arabesque, Mexican fiesta and modern Nordic. So with no surcharges anywhere for its award-winning food, a head chef who looks after the whole ship rather than just one restaurant, and the chance to learn how to cook the food you're eating, Oceania takes number one in our list for the best cruise lines for food. Now, as Glenn said at the start, of course, you may well disagree. Please contact us, let us know if you do disagree. Uh, email us on hello at planetcruise.co.uk. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter. Of course, like us on YouTube. It's very easy to subscribe and it's free. And the other thing, of course, is to go onto our website and have a look at all the cruises. We've got loads there for you and plenty of information. A big thank you to these people who got in touch in the last couple of shows. We wanted to give you a mention. Again, too many to mention, but we just picked a couple randomly. So to Mac and Cheese Homes on YouTube. I love that name. Thanks for getting in touch, Mac. And uh, he said, I'm going on the cruise in December on board the Tui Discovery in the Caribbean. Tui Discovery is going to be a fantastic ship, so let us know how you get on mac and cheese. And also uh, a big thank you to David John Derbyshire, who got involved in our recent uh, deal of a day about the Navigator of the Seas. And he says that it has the best disco on any cruise ship he's ever been on. The dungeon skeletons, gorgoyles, the lot. He said it was great. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much for watching. Do get in touch if you've got any feedback, any comments. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. If you want any more information on um, dining on board cruise ships, anything like that, you click the link and it will take you through to our landing page or you'll have a chance to chat to some of our very knowledgeable team members like Glenn, who are destination experts and cruise experts and will give you unbiased advice. Thank you for watching. Happy dining on board. Let us know what you think. Please don't starve as well. And we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.